if I, my energy level seems a little low, it's not you. It's just, it's been a week. I hope it's been a productive week for you. For me, I moderated a panel that I haven't done that in a while. I'll tell you more about that in a second, but I also, you know, it took, took some personal time to get some stuff done. Uh, and, and it was exhausting, but it was well worth it. Uh, which makes me think we should start off with maybe, maybe we should all take some personal time and relax this weekend. And a perfect way to do that is the Portland Retro Gaming Expo. I don't know if you've ever been, but if you haven't and you like old video games, you should definitely check this event out. It used to happen a little later, like mid-October. Uh, it's been bumped up to, to this weekend. Uh, so, so, you know, you got to get there this weekend. But the, the setup is amazing. It has old kind of cabinet video games so like pac-man and and dig dug and dragon's lair and all the ones that you love zevius and uh what, what's the one with the with the flying face thing i can't remember but you know they have a lot of it centipede they have centipede burger time probably burger time if you like the burger time uh me as a huge fan of tempest and missile command and they usually have those cabinets there as well they have sometimes they have pinball for you to play as well but the other thing they have is old consoles so if you've really been like wanting to play an atari 2600 maybe you want to play some pitfall harry you can do that there you can play the atari jaguar for whatever reason you'd want to do that or ColecoVision. maybe you want to do the ColecoVision. anyway all that being said portland retro gaming expo happening this weekend if you like retro games go there if you like new games there's also a reason to go there. I'm not sure if it's happening this year, but in previous years, the folks at Pig Squad, the Portland indie game squad, the, the folks developing their own games, also had uh, you know, a little area of the Retro Gaming Expo where you could try new games that are being built, bug test them, or try them pre-release. So uh, that's another important reason to go there. But you know, it's always a great event, uh, always brings a lot of joy, and is just you know, a great way to relax and, and bask in some nostalgia. Clearly, I wish I could remember the name of that game where the, the guy's face comes together and you have to like try and blow it up. It's a space game. It's a big anime. If you know the game I'm talking about, please put it in the comments because it's driving me nuts. And uh, Ber Berzer, no, never mind. You you probably know. Just let me know. Thank you. Okay, so go to Retro Gaming Expo. Now let's get in to what happened this week. First story, big story, uh, you know, I do regular searches on Portland startups and, and that kind of thing, but also people send me stuff all the time. And, you know, early morning, I can't remember, Monday or Tuesday, uh, a lot of people started sending me this thing. They're like, oh, have you heard of this company? They just raised $70 million. It's in, it's a Portland company. And uh, it, it, TechCrunch says a Portland company just raised $70 million. I'm like, hmm. I don't think so because I haven't heard anybody talking about it. Like, it, sure, I don't get all the news, but like, if a company was raising seventy million dollars, I would like to think I, I maybe would have caught it somewhere else. And uh, so I was like, "How did this? How this? What is this talking about?" And it turns out it was a company that used to be here, used to be here, uh, formed out of another company was here. Had a good exit. Team got back together, formed a new company. That company changed names while I was here, but then relocated its headquarters, um, I think, back east to New York. But there was still some some lint on Google that when you searched for this company, it was like, oh, yeah, they're in Portland. So that's clearly where uh, TechCrunch got that. So no fault there. I mean, they were doing their research. It, it was just the information was incorrect. And, uh, but it had me thinking of usually when this happens and it happens more often than you would think it's because of earth class mail. And if you haven't heard of earth class mail, long time Portland startup, like way back, like predating even Silicon florist. Like I think they were around doing things before I started writing the blog 17 years ago. And, um, 
their whole focus was basically digitizing mail. So you set them up as the people to receive your business mail or personal mail or whatever. They receive the mail, they scan it, they send you the digital files and you can either keep those and or you know you can tell them to destroy the mail like sometimes you get a check and you're like no you need to forward that to me whatever so they handle that They're basically like modernizing the idea of a po box and preventing you from needing to go to said po box to get your mail so good idea you know there was some drama there because they relocated to seattle for a while and then they came back all that being said I just went down a historical rabbit hole. I apologize, but it is interesting because of this one thing. Well, it may be interesting because of other things, but to me, it's interesting because of this one thing. All of their P.O. boxes are Beaverton, Oregon. So I'll regularly get these emails or searches that say, oh, this this Beaverton company just raised a ton of money or uh, this Beaverton company just hired a big exec. And, and it's because their listed mail address is is Earth Class Mail. It's the P.O. box there. And so people assume the company's in Beaverton, but it's not. So I thought this was one of those cases, but it was something entirely different. It was outdated information elsewhere. But just to clear things up, no. A Portland company did not raise $70 million this week. I'm sorry. I think there are many Portland companies that are capable of doing that and, and deserve to have that kind of capital to do what they're trying to do. But in this case, no, a Portland company did not raise $70 million this week. I felt a little overwhelmed this week. That's why I'm so happy I subscribed to so many things that keep me informed about what's going on. And if you'd like me to help you do the same thing, all you have to do is subscribe. I'll be here every week keeping you up to date on what's going on in the Portland startup community and throughout Oregon. Okay, at the outset, I told you I had the opportunity. There's a great group called Rose City Techies. They're like four months old. They're already up to like 600 members in their meetup group. They do regular meetups. They have a variety of formats, you know, book clubby kind of things or like uh, you know, portfolio review kind of things or, or workshops. This was really their first kind of paneled event that they'd done, I believe in their, in their four months of existence. And, uh, they invited me to, to moderate it. And of course, uh, past Rick, given that, that he, he has no love for future Rick said, yeah, of course I'd be happy to moderate future. Rick would be happy to moderate that. And it came up to this week and I'm like, I, ha I haven't moderated a panel in quite some time. Uh, I enjoy moderating. Like I, I used to be okay at it, but, uh, <laughs> but I, I got the pre-show jitters pretty badly because I hadn't moderated anything in a while. But anyway, the group was amazing. I got to talk to three founders, all who are, who are of course using AI in some amazing way, but, but here's the big bonus. So did the talk. Uh, the founders were amazing, insightful, inspiring, honest. I uh, highly encourage you to attend a Rose City Techies event if you, if you can, because it was just really well put together. Anyway, I get to the end and I'm like, look, your founders, you all need something. Tell us, tell us as an audience how we can help you with your startup. And then, and two of them were like, well, we're beta testing our product and we could use your help. And then one's like, well, we're in market. Then we would still like you to try our product and give us feedback. So if you like trying products, if you like beta testing products, here are three companies that you should consider using. The first one is Lumiro. I think it's lumiro.app. I'll link everything up so you have access to it. Lumiro is uh, walking tours, like AI, AI developed and refined walking tours for, for whatever city you're in. You want to see some interesting stuff. You don't want to have to go on like a big guided tour thingamajig or like hire a tour guide. That's what Lumiro is doing. Get you out there. You can even do it in Portland, do it in your hometown. Like maybe learn some stuff that you didn't know about Portland, or maybe you're new here. Maybe you just moved here and you're like, Hey, I want to learn some interesting stuff about Portland. That's what Lumiro is for. They are currently available on, on both iOS and the Google Play Store. So go try that app out 
And if you like what you see, let them know. If you have feedback that's not necessarily positive, let them know that as well. And the next one is MeBot. MeBot is uh, currently in beta, but they're allowing people uh, to sign up for the waitlist and and get signed up to beta test it. MeBot is a is a kind of AI avatar play where you can create uh, avatars that that then you can communicate with. So one of the examples that Peter, the the founder, used was like he has an avatar of his grandma who has passed away and, and he can still communicate with his grandma and, and have conversations with her and get her feedback and that kind of thing. You know, it could be maybe somebody else in your life, or I've seen people, uh, use this like, uh, Suzanne Tong at the AI science fair had done this kind of thing, but for her boss. So like she could chat with her boss's avatar and kind of get some of her boss's feedback or thoughts on things that she was working on. So it's that kind of play. So if you're interested, you have somebody in your life that you don't have all the access you would like or somebody who's passed away or you've lost touch with, um, this is designed to give you access to their their memories and their thoughts and, and the ability to chat with them. So if that's interesting to you, Mebot, currently in beta, check that out. And then the final one is my fit check. Uh, my fit check is really uh, the most interesting thing about this one was just how thoughtful Araba was about, uh, the founder was about the product because she's like, I wanted to use AI and I needed to find an opportunity to do it where it didn't have to be right. So I picked fashion and style and she's like, the beauty of my fit check is like, it doesn't necessarily have to be right. It just has to provide you with direction. So uh, if you're not hip to all the all the lingo with the kids these days, my fit is basically what I'm wearing, you know, my outfit and how I'm put together, my fit, get outfit, get it. So uh, <laughs> you're, you're welcome for the for the kid chat one on one. So um, Basically, this uses AI to help you. You kind of say, this is my style. This is what I think I want to wear. And it not only provides you with guidance, but also provides you with imagery to show you how to put that fit together. And there, uh, early beta, have a wait list. If that sounds interesting to you, you know, my head automatically goes to, to Clueless, where Cher is like in her closet, like matching the the clothes together like that's immediately what i always think about but if you're interested in trying something like that if you need help with your fashion clearly i'm dialed on my fashion with the hat and the t-shirt constantly sometimes i wear a long shirt underneath my t-shirt and and that's really all all i need in terms of fashion so if you're more fashionable than me or you would like to be more fashionable than me maybe check out my fit check as well. Again, I'll link all those up so you have the opportunity to beta test those two or download the production version of Lumira. Next up, an uh, event that I love dearly called Pitch Latino has happened here regularly in Portland, but you know, they're growing up. They're the Latino founders crew. They hired Juan Barraza as the executive director. Now they're doing their events all over the place. So they do Pitch Latino Portland. They did a Pitch Latino Seattle. And on October 1st, they will be doing Pitch Latino Bend. This one's slightly different. It's free to attend. Usually you buy a ticket to kind of kick in to the prize money because everybody gets prizes. But um, this time in Bend, totally free. Get to go see some amazing Latin led companies pitch. And then, you know, the audience votes and, and the big winners get kind of bigger prize money, like the top winners, but everybody gets something for their time. Everybody gets prize money. The thing I like most about Pitch Latino and Pitch Black, which is the, the competition that Pitch Latino was, was kind of inspired by, not kind of, it was inspired by Pitch Black. But what I like about both of those is they're not typical pitch competition founder as tribute get up there and entertain us by pitching your startup and and maybe a few of you get something out of it but the rest of you feel like well that was a great opportunity to practice my pitch but that that's really all i got out of it uh what i like about pitch latino and pitch black is everybody gets something sure the the crowd favorites get more capital more prize money 
but everybody gets something for participating. Everybody gets some form of capital for taking the time to take the stage and pitch their companies. And so if that's of interest to you and you're in Central Oregon and you're interested in Latin led startups, or if you're just interested in startups in general, like go to Pitch Latino. It's always a great show, always some amazing presenters. That's taking place October 1st in Bend, Oregon. Pitch Latino Bend 2024. Please attend. You know, I like the affinity maps. I love when like they, there's there's like buzz cut, which is all about like non-alcoholic opportunities. There's everywhere is queer, which is like queer owned and queer friendly establishments around the world. It's like this huge database of things. You know, back in the day, one of my one of the first companies I ever wrote about was was Placial, which was early affinity mapping before there were things like Google map layers that you can do. And then there was, you know, on Thirsty. On Thirsty was a happy hour finder affinity map. Well, now there's an Oregon beer trail affinity map, which will let you know about all kinds of different breweries, brew pubs, bottle shops, places that sell beer in Oregon. Uh, it's still in the works as an app, but the map has been released as a web accessible map. So if you are a beer aficionado, if you're like, I need something besides yet another IPA, maybe take a look at the Oregon beer map and maybe plan, you know, your next road trip. Like uh, maybe you want to, you want to go off the beaten path the next time you're traveling through Oregon. Cause you're like, Oh, there's this really interesting brewery over here, or this is a brew pub that I didn't know existed. And I would like to take a break. Maybe I grab lunch there and try something new. Uh, really my favorite thing about affinity maps is both like, not only do you learn a lot more because they're so focused and kind of, kind of not niche, but like nuanced to a particular focus. I love that part about it, but I almost love more the fact that somebody is getting to express their passion about a particular subject through geographical reference, which is just, which is amazing. Like the fact that they can build these things that help them show how much they know about a particular topic and make it available and accessible to you. If you care about that topic, I think that's what I love most about affinity maps. So if you're a beer drinker, if you're looking for some new places in Oregon, please check out the Oregon beer trail map and stay tuned for an app coming soon. Speaking of beer, you know, beer kind of falls into this like consumer products realm. So like CPG, which is, you know, consumer packaged goods or consumer products like apparel and footwear, food, beverage, all that kind of stuff. Like Oregon is ridiculously good in that space. We have amazing companies. You know, I always try and quote my co-founder at Built Oregon, Mitch Doherty, who says, you know, really insightful and, and cute things like, uh, <laughs> like Oregon is the Silicon Valley of consumer products. And, and I always paraphrase that as the Bay Area because I just I like Silicon Valley, really. Anyway, no fault to Mitch. He's not in the tech realm. He thinks Silicon Valley, it's fine. So the other thing he likes to say is, uh, you know, most colleges or professional teams have their stadiums named after banks or insurance companies or whatever. And, and in, in Oregon, we have some named after companies that make potato salad, like Research Stadium. Yes, they make potato salad. They make salsa too, but they started with potato salad. If you did not know that, that's your trivial fact for the day. Reesers, potato salad. I knew them more for salsa. So if you thought it was salsa, that's fine. That's what I knew them for too. Anyway, so Mitch built consumer products, all that kind of thing. Built Oregon, the voice of consumer products, the nonprofit designed to help everyone from the, the Nikes and Columbia's of the world, the Reesers and the Tillamooks, down through, you know, the earliest stage startup, just working at that farmer's market, trying to figure out how to make a product work in the market. That's who Built represents. And Built has just turned 10. 
and we will be celebrating that next week at Built Festival 2024. The main event takes place on October 4th, 10-4. 10-4, good buddy. Uh, it's pretty much an all-day event. Starts in the morning, goes through yeah, early evening, late afternoon, early evening, like late afternoon with the actual panels and then, uh, you know, after party kind of thing. But anyway, if you are interested in consumer products in Oregon, if you are in the consumer product space and you're like, I talk to everybody I work with, but I would like to talk to more people from the community. That's what the Built Festival is designed to do. It's designed to bring the community together to celebrate what's happening here, to get people connected. And as luck would have it, tickets are still available. So if that sounds interesting to you, tickets are $45 and it's, uh, you know, well worth every penny. Not only will you see speakers, people will be tabling and showing products. So you get to talk directly to people who are making the products. Like it's just, a, it's a good time. You get to meet a bunch of different people. You get to meet people outside your discipline. You get to meet like food and beverage and knives and coats and shoes and everything. So if that sounds even remotely interesting, we would love to see you at Built Fest. I'll be in the AV play. I'll be running the slides or something. So you, you probably won't see much of me, but Mitch would love to see you <laughs> as would all the other people in the community. So please come join us on Friday, October 4th, 10-4 good buddy. And, uh, we would love to love to see you there. Help us celebrate 10 years of built Oregon and, uh, and celebrate all the wonderful and amazing companies being built here in Oregon in the consumer product space. All right. That's it. Uh, again, sorry. My energy level is a little down. This has been a week. There's been a lot of stuff happening. I hope you had a good week. I hope everything went well for you. I hope this news was interesting to you. There's some fun trivial facts in there kind of thrown in and all that kind of thing. Uh, I hope you're hanging in there. And until we get the chance to chat again, please keep up the good work.